Okay, hi, it's Craig here from the clan. Uh, this is the next one in my series of gear videos which are designed to maybe answer some questions you've got about gear and possibly give you some information that might be of use to you, that's all. So, what are we looking at today? Well, what we're looking at today is how we control one of these beasts here. Some of you probably paid a lot of money for uh, expensive heads or something like that and basically they give you the tone you want, but there's one problem with it, and the fact is they give you the tone when they're cranked right up to full. This is a 100 watt Marshall Super Lead, and you just heard it on 10 there. So it sounds great, or I think it does anyway. Um, but what we're looking at today applies to different makes of amps as well. Basically, if you turn them down, they don't sound the same. I'll just show you that quickly now. So we're on 10 at the moment. We got this kind of tone, which is a nice pure rock tone. Okay, so people say, well, why can't you turn it down a bit? Well, this is what happens if you do. So if I turn this down to half now, um, it still sounds good. But I think we've lost something there. We've kind of lost some of the bottom end. It doesn't quite sound as rocky as it did before. And actually, it's probably still too loud to use in your average uh, local venue. So you're probably looking at levels about this, really, to play in pubs and venues like that. Which, again, probably hasn't actually got much quieter, but it has lost a lot of the bottom end. So what can we do about this? Because really, valve amps, we want them on full whack, really. That's when they're working the best, especially the output stages. If you've got a master volume amp, you've probably got half your problem solved, or you, it's a different problem, but um, if you want to use your output valves on full like I do, we've got to have some way of turning this down, but keeping that tone. So there's, I'm going to show you today about three different ways that I've tried to actually do this. So the first one we do is we put something into the effects loop of the amplifier. Now, some of the older amplifiers I know don't have an effects loop, so you're not going to be able to do this. But there's a lot of boxes like this one on the market. This one's uh, made by Omnisonic. And this effectively goes in your effects loop so that you can still have your amp on full whack and then you can control the volume in between the preamp and the, the output stages with this little device here. So uh, let's have a look at that now. Okay, so what I've done here is I've plugged this Omnisonic uh, box into the effects loop. So the effects send goes into the input the output from this goes back into the return of the amp. So, this is with the uh, box not turned on, so. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on now. We shouldn't get any difference because it's on full. Right, I'll turn this down to half now. So the amp is still on full, but that box is on half. So the effects uh, send and return is uh, controlling the volume. So. So it works, you know, uh, I'm not going to say it's the greatest box in the world, but it's up to you to make your own mind up on that. These little boxes, you can pick them up for about $50 US, um, probably about 30 quid in the UK. So uh, that's what it does. Now you are scuppered, of course, if you've got an amp that hasn't got an effect send and return on it, which some of the old classic amps don't have. This one's a reissue, so it actually has got one. Um, I don't generally use one of these, but it obviously works. And if you're short of cash or it, it floats your boat, why not go for it? Okay, we're moving on to the next thing now. So uh, I'll just set that up for you. Okay, so we tried the uh, effects send and return loop. This is a different kind of box now. Uh, this one happens to be a Marshall, but there are other models available. This is what's called a speaker attenuator. Now, 
The way this one works is your speaker output from your amplifier that normally goes direct to your speaker goes to this box and then a cable from this box into your speaker. So it sits between the amp and the speaker. This, this one has no uh, power supply required. I don't know how it works exactly. I'm guessing it's some kind of large resistor, impedance, whatever. It, it has a, a notched setting dial on it. So if I just show you, this is at the full volume, so it should be the same as if it wasn't in use at all. So. Um... <laughs> Okay, so for all intents and purposes, that is just the same as not having any attenuator in the loop at all. What I'm going to do now is I turn this down to uh, I don't know, about halfway, and what we're hoping to get here is the same tone but at a lower volume. So let's give it a go. Now, I don't know whether you think that's the same or not. Personally, I, I like that tone. I think it's great. I've used this for about four years. Um, it's been great. I say you can switch it. It's, it's got various tappings on it for different uh, settings. <laughs> But for me, the important thing is that the tone I'm getting is the tone from the amp. It's not being affected, I don't think, by that at all. Um, if it is, it's certainly doing it in a pleasing way to me. So that's the Marshall Power Brake. As I say, there are other devices on the market you can get. Uh, you, you do a quick search on Google or some other search engine, and I'm sure you'll find a few. Um, but that one works for me. So, why don't I use it all the time now? Well, there's one, one problem I've had with this, and... It's effectively the, uh, <laughs> the same problem Nigel Tufnell had on Spinal Tap. What do you do when you're playing, your amp's on full blast, you want to go to a solo, so you want to go up a bit, you want to go to 11. Um, how do you do that? Well, a lot of you would say, well, you stand on a booster pedal or something like that. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to work because this amplifier is running flat out. When you stand on a booster pedal, the valves have got nowhere to go, so all they do is, well, I believe they compress is the correct term for it, and actually nothing gets any louder. It just slightly changes the sound, but it doesn't get any louder, which is not what you want to do when you come to a solo. So that's my only issue with this box, really, that I can't kind of go anywhere up when I'm playing. So it's great in the studio. If you listen to any of the clan recordings, they're all recorded using this and this amp. So how do I get around that? That's the next box. Okay, this is uh, device number three we're going to use to try and tame this Marshall 100 watt. This is something called a Bad Cat Unleash. Uh, like the Marshall power break I showed you before, this fits in between the amp and the speakers. So it is a speaker attenuator. I think it works slightly differently though, and uh, I don't know the full complexities of this because you do actually have to power this device up. So I suspect there's some kind of amplifier in here which is a pure amplifier and it's taking the sound we're putting into it and re you know outputting it at a, a level we want to control so basically here's what we do it with this is with it really on full so um we'll get the similar levels to what we get with no attenuation but, uh... <laughs> Which again is far too loud to play in your average local. So uh, what we can do is we can turn this down to a level we want. I think I normally play with it on about that level there. And let's see what it sounds like.
Okay, now I quite like that. I think that sounds pretty good. So I'm quite happy with it. But as I said before, what we can do with this is because we couldn't do it with the power brake, was this appears to have two different settings of amplifier or whatever, however it works, we can have two settings on this device. So I can set the second volume here slightly higher than the volume on channel one and I can switch between them. So when I come to my solos, I can start tread on the button, the volume goes up. What I'll do here is I'll increase the second volume quite considerably. I'd probably have it more subtle than this on a, a live performance, but just so you can actually tell that I'm, it's going on or off, you'll see the lights come on anyway. So I'll start off with the rhythm, we'll boost up for a solo and then we'll go back down to the rhythm. So. Hopefully you could see that. There was no change of tone, it was just a bit louder on the sound, the, the solo than it was on the rhythm. So this bad cat lets me do what I want to do. It solves my problem of getting the tone out of my amp at a volume that's usable in your average venue and it also lets me boost up for solos or when I need to go to 11 in, my, in Nigel Tufnell's uh, lingo. So three different ways of uh, taming a Marshall or in fact any other amp at all. Um, the first way I showed you uses the effects loop. You might not be able to do that on some of the older amps. Other amps, I don't know, Fender Twin Reverbs, Vox AC30s. You could certainly use a Marshall power brake on that. Crank your Vox up to a full whack. Control the volume with the power brake. You could do the same with the Bad Cat. Hopefully that's helped you out a little bit. Maybe solved a problem you've been experiencing for quite some time. There are lots of other things on the market, but certainly these are the three I've tried. The first one, this one goes in your effects loop, cheap and cheerful. This probably costs about, I don't know, $50 US, uh, 30 pound UK, something like that. Round about that mark. The power brake here, uh, I can't remember the exact cost I paid for this, but I have seen them recently for about 200 pounds uh, UK, which I'm guessing is about $300 US. And then the Bad Cat, obviously it's, a powered device so it's probably got a bit more electronics in it it's got the two um two output options i think uh somewhere around 300 pounds 350 pounds uk which i don't know if you were to pay that in dollars in the uk it'd be about 500 dollars, i guess somewhere around about that mark might actually be cheaper in the states anyway so there are three devices there's plenty more on the market enjoy it use your amps that's what you paid for but keep the volume down. Okay, thanks a lot.